House! Good morning. Welcome to Freedom House. Good morning, Freedom House. I'm Ann Jean, and I just want you to know that I have missed every single one of you. I've missed welcoming you in the morning times on Sunday. So welcome to Freedom House this morning. Good morning, folks, and welcome to Freedom House. Gorgeous day. Good time for fellowship. God bless you. Hi, good morning to Freedom House. My name is Leah, and we're glad you're here today. Welcome. Well, that was a familiar welcome. You got your Phil, you got your Angie, the Farrens, the whole crew's there. Soon, soon we'll be back together. Good morning, welcome to Freedom House. My name's Dave Carroll. Lovely to have you here. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and we're gonna worship today. We're gonna worship tonight for just worship uh, on, the, on the Zoom. But uh, for now, we are going to go into a great time of worship and the Vandenberg family are leading us in worship this morning, which is uh, very exciting. It's Pentecost Sunday and uh, in the book of Acts, it says this, when the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place without warning. Morning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force that no one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. It's Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the Spirit of God coming, and we're going to believe and declare that He's going to come in power this morning. So, Lord, we release you to be big and good, just like you were in the upper room today inside Freedom House and inside of our homes and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Vandenbergs, light her up.
day when my strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise
We exalt the name of the Lord Most High. Heavenly Father, this day we lift you up. We say, Holy Spirit, come, and we believe that you are good, the same good yesterday, today, and forever. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And welcome to Freedom House Sunday Morning. My name is Dave Carroll, one of the pastors here on staff. Very excited to be able to have you here. Want to go over just a few announcements. You can see all the announcements either at the beginning or the end of the uh, of the service today. I'm going to list them all there, but just want to highlight a few. Uh, coming up next Saturday, this Saturday and the Saturday after, uh, June 6 and 13, we are going to be doing the One Church Food Drive. Now, we have gone over and we've, co- we've come up with a way that... Um, is safe. We are going to be able to respect the social distancing uh, dialogue and so it's going to be a a safe experience to be able to go and both drop off flyers to people's homes and then collect food the following Saturday. If uh, and we need we need some help to be able to make sure that this happens both in Freedom House and uh, and throughout the city. So if you get a hold of Erin she'll give you all the details and uh, sign you up and uh, point us in the right direction as she normally does is that's what she's really, really, really good at. Tonight, uh, my shirt says, make it a blockbuster night, but I'm encouraging you to make it a just worship night. (laughs) We're gonna be doing an online just worship like we did a few months back on Zoom, where we're gonna have prayer and worship. It's Pentecost Sunday, and it's a great time to be able to gather the church. So it is tonight. There's the ad for right there with all the details. Again, email Erin, and she will send you the link to get on the Zoom call and we're gonna to worship tonight as a house. The COVID Kindness Awards, we're gonna begin giving out COVID Kindness Awards this week. So if you know somebody who has been extra kind um, or really taken the time to be able to be a kindness superhero, and there are so many in our community, fill out the application form. You can find it on the Kindness Project Facebook page. And uh, we wanna be able to honor some of these folks, including giving them uh, some free Dairy Delight ice cream because of how just lovely they are. Nikki. Let's do the offering. Good morning, Freedom House. It's so great to see you again, and I hope you have been enjoying uh, the warmth and the sunshine this week. And I just want to thank you again for your faithfulness in giving. And today I want to look at a beautiful scripture from Psalm chapter 96, and it says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness and tremble before him all the earth. And I just love how uh, David just talks about how our offerings and our gifts uh, are worship to God and a way of honoring him and a way of um, reminding ourselves of what he's worth. And and so as you give today, uh, I want you to uh, present to God as an act of worship and and uh, remind your heart and your soul about what God is worth and and I know for myself when I put my heart in that position it's really hard to be stingy and it's a beautiful way to to give and to give cheerfully and so God we just declare blessing uh, over every act of worship today God and we just ask Lord that you would bless each giver Uh, each worshiper, Lord, today as they give in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Nikki. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. Brian is in his big green chair with the majestic Bible off to his side and the pretty little globe over there. Doesn't that that is that is one of the biggest Bible on a shelf I've ever seen. So cool. Anyway, Brian, I digress. Over to you, buddy. Good morning, Freedom House. Happy Pentecost Sunday, 2020. It's going to be a great, great day. I'm very excited about this Pentecost Sunday. I'll be honest with you, I actually hadn't followed a lot of the Pentecost Sunday things previously. A day on the calendar, happy about it. The day the Holy Spirit came was poured out. Never really put it on the calendar before, but I actually believe today is very, very significant for us, and we're going to share a few reasons why this morning. We'll share some more tonight at our Just Worship. So it's a great day. I'm glad you're with us this morning or whenever you're watching this service. Glad you're with us. And uh, so, yeah, it's Pentecost Sunday 2020. Message today is called There's More or A Tale of Two Johnnies, if you will. 
a tale of two Johnnies. Let me tell you about the first Johnny. First Johnny was around uh, in the 60s, actually part of a band called the Righteous Brothers. If uh, you remember them, you might remember one of their songs, Unchained Melody. It goes, Oh my love, my darling, I hunger for your touch. Ow! Anyway, that's their song. He was part of that band and uh, very uh, connected back in the day. And uh, when his friends started uh, witnessing to him, led him to Jesus, said to him, hey, you know, you need to go to church now. You know, that's what you should do. You're now serving the Lord. You should go to church. So, so he starts going to church and actually doesn't like it at all. He's going to church and he's sitting in church and he thinks it's boring. But his friend says, no, you got to keep going to church. You got to keep going. In fact, you got to read your Bible now. You need to get in the word of God and God will start speaking to you. It'll be really, really good. And so he does. Johnny's reading the, the Bible now and he's actually reading really, really enjoying that, going to church, not really enjoying that, reading the Bible, loving that a lot. In fact, he's reading through uh, the gospel, specifically, going, specifically now going into the book of Acts, and uh, he's loving the book of Acts. He's uh, like, man, it's amazing all the things he sees there, all the stuff that he's seeing happening, all the stuff he sees the disciples doing, and so uh, going to church, hating it. So one day after, after a sermon in church one day, he actually, he's actually... Uh, decided I, I, I can't do this anymore I gotta go I'm gonna go talk to the pastor so after the pastor's done pastor walks, walks down off the platform Johnny goes up to him and says hey pastor how you doing I just just want to chat for a minute if you got a minute sure sure Johnny let's chat he goes uh, he goes I've been in your church now for a while and I've been reading the Bible and and a lot of great stuff in the Bible a lot of great stuff in the book of Acts the stuff there's amazing just really really excited about this stuff and he says pastor when do we get to do the stuff and the pastor says oh oh Johnny oh Johnny uh, we don't do the stuff today that was just for back then we don't do the book of Acts stuff today Johnny stares at him and look he looks at him and goes you're kidding he said I gave up drugs for this and he walked out of the church and he actually never went back. But he didn't give up on the Lord. He didn't give up on his friends and the other Christians he was making friends with. In fact, he moved on so much and started digging so much, pursuing God so much that he actually, him and some friends actually started their own church. Uh, they got deeply into the Word of God and started their own church. It was a church called, you will know it as, the Vineyard Church. His name is John Johnny Wimber. And uh, interestingly, so now the things happening in Toronto that happened since the 90s, Catch the Fire, actually have a lot of their origin in what John Wimber and his friends were doing back in the 80s into the, and into the 90s. So amazing. So first Johnny's story is amazing. And... Uh, leads us up to a scripture day we're going to look at is Acts 2, which is the recording of the day of Pentecost. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I encourage you to because it's so amazing, but I, I'm not going to. I want to read the first few verses, the first four verses. It says this, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. sitting. Then there appeared uh, to them divided tongues, tongues of, as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit enabled them. Now, I just want to put this in context, but we've been talking about Acts chapter 1 for a couple of weeks. Let me just give you a little context here because... When you go back to John 20, the John chapter 20, uh, these guys had already received the Holy Spirit. Like in John 20, you'll see that, that after Jesus' resurrection, he appears to them and he breathes on them. It says he breathes on them. John 20, verse 22, it says he breathes on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. So there's something else that, that Jesus is saying uh, that's recorded. Luke records in, in uh, Luke 24, 49. He says, wait in Jerusalem to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Luke repeats that same thing in Acts 1, verse 8. He says, stay in Jerusalem, stay there. Then verse 8 specifically, you'll receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all to the ends of the earth. 
So, so there's something that Jesus was saying that was going to happen to these guys that if they would wait in Pentecost, that's where we were last week, wait for this experience of Pentecost. And so 10 days after Jesus said that, it happened. It's this upper room experience where there's wind and fire and tongues and prophecy. And Peter stands up and, and preaches a message that, that was fantastic. It says 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 men, probably more than that, were saved. Uh, it's amazing. And, and to just put that more in context, just regarding a few weeks prior to this, is that a few weeks prior to this, when, when Peter was, was challenged by a young girl at a fire about whether she knew Jesus just before he was crucified, he actually, he actually uh, got very upset with her and, and said, no, I don't even know the man. Like, and that was one young lady in front of a fireplace, and now he's standing up at the day of Pentecost in front of thousands declaring who Jesus is, and it says thousands, at least 3,000, probably more, were saved. And then not only did that happen, but they actually did what Jesus said. They actually went from there to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. They really did. Amazing. And, and, and so up until today, we've, we've put that on, it's been on our calendar. The day of Pentecost is on our calendar, especially if you're, uh, if, especially if you're from a liturgical church, it's very significant it's on there. And so, and so today, literally billions of people around the world are going to be uh, observing the day of Pentecost. But I also want to suggest to I want to suggest to us that maybe what we have a habit of doing and what has made this a challenge for us is that we've we've taken the experiences of Pentecost, the experiences that happened there at Pentecost, over the real purpose of Pentecost. I'm going to go a little deeper in that. We've 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 made a big issue about the experience of Pentecost rather than the purpose of Pentecost. Let me, let me break this down a little bit for us. So, there's a lot of churches today that make the experience of tongues really significant. In fact, there are whole denominations based around what happened on the day of Pentecost in terms of the tongues that came. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the fact that they spoke in tongues. I, I don't have a problem. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the New Testament to believe in that gift. We believe that tongues are for today. We believe that all the gifts are for today. Um, I would be challenged about making a denomination based around that experience. And I would go farther than that, and you can just play with this and do with whatever you want, is that the actual tongues that some denominations uh, are excited about are not even the tongues that were celebrated on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, it was languages. People there heard the gospel in their own languages. And tongues today that seems to be celebrated by some denominations is really more about, can I get an experience with God and pray in an unknown tongue, blah, blah, blah. Not bad not the purpose. It's the, the experience wasn't the purpose. Let me go after another one. The, the experience of prophecy. Peter goes on when he, he's preaching. He goes on and says, this, what you're, what you're experiencing today, people that you're, you're in, in the day of Pentecost, the first one, he said, what you're experiencing today is what the prophet Joel prophesied about years ago. He said, this is what the prophet Joel said, that your, your, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even your young men, your daughters, your maids, certain everyone can can experience these gifts, the gifts of, of divine revelation, dreams, visions, prophecy. And some people, and today, just so we keep it clear here, there are some movements today based around those gifts, the gift of prophecy. I want to say again, this was an experience that they had. It wasn't about this experience. Nothing wrong with it, but it wasn't about the experience. Miracles. Man, you, you look near the end of the book of, uh, or the second cha chapter of Acts of Pentecost, they were saying, man, and, and they weren't just hearing the word, and they weren't just, uh, you know, back into this pro the prophecy deal. It was like, now there were awesome, amazing miracles that were being uh, that were being done among the people and everyone was astounded and and today what we've done is we've now made whole movements around miracles and in fact some some even say out loud that if you're not walking in these miracles you may not even be saved and so we've made it about an experience 
over the purpose of Pentecost. I could go on and on. I could talk about the money. So at the end of Acts 2, it talks about it talks about that that people actually a number of times in Acts, it talks about how how rich people would come, they they'd sell a piece of land, they come and bring all this money and lay it at the apostles' feet so no one had any needs. Think about that for a minute. Think about if if in fact that happened today and there wasn't one person had a need because money's coming. Well, money's a tool. Money is an experience. And there are movements today that are based around money. You see where I'm going with this, right? I'm going to I'm going to stretch one right now, but just for for my own for my own sake. Uh, one of the one of the phrases that says is the uh, that there was a sound from heaven. And I think I'm just going to I'm going to equate that just for our discussion today with the fact that there, the sound from heaven and there's a worship movement today and people are like so into worship and and listen we we are at Freedom House a worship we call ourselves a worship driven church a presence driven church and we love all of these things we're not against any of these things but these are experiences these things that I've talked about tongues and prophecy and miracles and money if you will and worship all of these are just experiences they're signs. Say out loud, signs. There's signs. And what do signs do? Signs point to something more important. These signs, tongues, prophecy, miracles, they're, they're signs to point to something more important, and that's Jesus. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be my witnesses. That's a purpose. You'll receive the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. You'll receive the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. I'm not against any of those things. Please, again, I'll say it one more time. This three times. I'm not against tongues, prophecy, miracle, money, worship. We believe all those are important tools and or signs. And I'm not, they're not, they're not, it's not like they're the golden calf. It's not like people, we've made an idol of them, I hope. Please don't. But I would say maybe somewhere between the golden calf and the Mount of Transfiguration. When Peter and James and John go up on the Mount of Transfiguration, they go, oh man, the glory here is so amazing. What we've experienced here, God, is, uh, Jesus rather, is so amazing. Can we stay here? Can we build some tents here and stay up on this mountain? Jesus said, no. It's, it was never about this experience. I wanted to show you who I really am. I wanted to be tr transfigured. I want to be changed in front of you so you saw my real glory. So when we go back down to the people, which is the point, when we have the experience, we go back to the people, we know that God is real and we can show Him off. It's not about the experience. It's not about those things. It's about their signs that point to something more important. Signs point to something more important. These signs. You'll receive the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. You'll receive my Holy Spirit to be my witnesses. And we need power to do that. I, I want to I wanna double back on something I said about Peter earlier, is that he went from not even being able to speak to a young lady at, at a campfire just before Jesus is crucified, he doesn't even have the boldness to do that, and now he's standing up in, in front of thousands. How amazing. And, and that's not even it. So the day of Pentecost comes and goes. And the next chapter, ch chapter 3, uh, uh, Peter and, and John are on the way to the temple. They heal this guy uh, because it's a sign. But it's a sign pointing to something. And because they realize they will receive the Holy Spirit as a, to be his witnesses, they didn't stop with the miracle, although that was great. They actually took the opportunity to say, hey, let's talk to these guys. Peter stands up and speaks again. And and another 2,000 people come to the Lord. That's not bad for your first two sermons. Like 3,000 and then 2,000. That's 5,000 in the first two sermons. Man, I would say, uh, that's all for me. Drop the mic, I'm out. But he just kept going. Peter just kept going because he realized that, that this is the same Holy Spirit. And let me follow through on, on what happened next because what's really interesting is that, that they, they, the, the religious people want to arrest them. And they actually, when they when they're release them, they go back to the people and they go, wow, let's pray. Oh, so grateful. Holy Spirit, come again. And they pray and say, Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us again? Catch that. Holy Spirit, come and fill us again because we need more. There's more. We need more. And it says the place where they were was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and received boldness to speak. 
you'll receive power. There will be an experience. You'll receive power. And I don't, I don't actually care what your experience is. I'm expecting this weekend, uh, today, tonight, specifically at Just Worship, I'm expecting in our homes, we're going to be like upper room kind of moments where we experience Holy Spirit. But there, there is a purpose for it. There's a purpose for Holy Spirit, not just for those experiences. Those are signs. Those are signs. So the Holy Spirit comes again and he fills them and he fills them again and they receive it. Even the building is shaken in Acts 4 and uh, they said and they were able to speak with boldness. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be witnesses, to speak for boldness. Let me tell you about the other Johnny. This guy's a guy named Johnny Enloe. Johnny Enlow is a really interesting guy, and, and uh, I actually got this, this story off of his uh, Facebook page. And Johnny Enlow's a prophetic guy, he's a big Seven Mountains guy, and uh, he was talking about the importance of Holy Spirit, and how the Holy Spirit can be a sign for believers and unbelievers, and it's so amazing on this Pentecost Sunday. And so he talks about this, he, says he used to do a lot of uh, missions work, and uh, he was actually in Peru in, uh, back a few years ago, and he was given an opportunity to go into the secular schools. And he was, he was, it was a top private school in, in the nation of Peru, and he, he, he was said, they told him, you, got, you have five minutes in each classroom to say whatever you want about God. Wow, what would you do? You got five minutes in each classroom to say whatever you want about God. What would you do? Here's what he did. He walks in, they let him come to the front of the class, he goes, Hi, my name is Johnny Enlow. How many of you have ever, ever heard of God? Everyone puts up their hand. How many would like you to prove, how, sorry, how many would like God to prove to you that He's alive today and you'll never forget it? Well, a little hesitancy, but eventually everyone in the classrooms put up their hands. So here's what I want you to do, Johnny says to all of them. He says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up. I want you to stand in front of your desk, and I want you to put your hands out like you're about to receive something with your eyes closed. A little bit of looking around, a little bit of peeking, but eventually they all do it. He does this. He, he says, he prays this. He goes, Holy Spirit, would you come into this room and confirm to every one of these kids that you are real? Would you confirm by what they suddenly feel that you are God? And he waited, gave it a few minutes, a few moments rather. And then he asked, he said, how many of you know that God is real and you'll never forget? He said 100% of those kids in every one of the classes raise their hand. Those kids had an experience. There was an invitation because Johnny Enlo knew Holy Spirit was aching to get to people. And he gave them an opportunity with five minutes. He gave them an opportunity to experience Holy Spirit so it could point to God. That's exactly what Pentecost is about. That's exactly what Pentecost is about, is that there is more. We, we aren't in the middle of this thing to just come to a church and hear a message and maybe don't, not even like it. We aren't in this thing to just hear different things or, or even read the Bible. We're here to actually take it in, understand it's for us, understand it's for today, understand the Holy Spirit has incredible ways to help us reach the people that God loves. And you know who that is? Everyone. That's everyone. Pentecost Sunday 2020. There's more. The Tale of Two Johnnies. I, I, I believe, I believe, and I, and I will say this, I, and I've said this now for a few weeks, that I would say the prophetic voices on the planet that I know, and many that I don't, are all pointing to today as a really, really significant day. Pentecost Sunday, 2020. Maybe the most significant Pentecost Sunday since the first one. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss a thing God wants to do today. I, I believe there's more, and I want it. I need it. You? 
I need what Holy Spirit wants to do. I need to become, if in fact, if in fact God is bringing us into a new era, and I believe that, I've been talking about it since the fall, I've said to you over the last few weeks, the number of people, the others that are saying it, there's more and we need it. It's, it's, you'll receive power, but it's power with a purpose. It's an experience with a purpose. It's a sign with a purpose. You'll receive it so you can be my witnesses. So, so none in your family will perish. So none in Brantford will perish. So none in Canada will perish. God, God is desire. His will is that none would perish. It's power. It's experience. It's, a, it's signs and wonders with a purpose that he became, becomes famous in our lives, in our families, our homes, our city, and beyond. We're going to pray in just a minute. And I, I, want, I want us to each pray. I want us to invite Holy Spirit for more. There's more. The hungry get it. There's always going to be more. Just like, just like we talked about already. Like, I'm not sure where you are in this, this journey with God or this journey with Holy Spirit. Maybe you're, maybe you're never heard of Holy Spirit. Well, there you go. You did today. Maybe you're pre-Pentecost. You've heard of Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You've done the thing before, but you, you pre-Pentecost. Well, good, good for you. Today's a good day. Maybe you're post-First Pentecost, but pre-Acts 4 because you thought it was just a one-time thing. It's not. There's more. Maybe you're post-Acts 4 and you're like, man, is there more? The answer to that is yes. There's more. There's more and we need it. I'm going to say that again. There's more and we need it. As God brings us into this, this new era, this fresh move of His Spirit, this new rebirth of the church, I'm going to say it. Uh, a renaissance is, is a word that I'm hearing now. A renaissance. And I, I believe that God wants to endue us with power, to empower us to actually be, be, be His kingdom messengers. Two nations. Kingdom authority with kingdom messengers with kingdom power authority to the nations discipling our friends those we know with righteousness peace and joy to our city and beyond so let's pray just take a minute and and, and welcome holy spirit in your room wherever you are with your family there's more and i need it would you say that there's more, and I need it. God, I'm hungry for more. Holy Spirit, on this Pentecost Sunday 2020, would you come and fill me with more? I choose to let go of anything that's not helping me towards your goals for my family, for my city, for the country. Lord, would you empty me of whatever is there and fill me with your Spirit now? Come and fill me. Come and refill me. Come so I overflow with a love for others. Yeah. Lord, we receive, we receive it today. Come, Holy Spirit. We receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just say one more thing before, before you go, that uh, tonight is really important. Tonight, we've, we've set aside tonight for a just worship, and we're going to join together as Freedom House. And, and I'll say this again, we're, we are joining today with billions, say that, billions of Christians around the globe right now, believing and expecting for a fresh outpouring. I believe it's going to happen. And so tonight we're going to come and worship. We're going to hear some prophetic. We're going to we're going to just press in together and expect. I'm expecting great great things tonight. I want you all to be there. I want you all to be there. Can I can I add a third John on this one? So we've talked about John Wimber and Johnny Enlow. Can I add a, another one? And here's here's what I've uh, been following. What John Arnott's been doing a little bit this week. Uh, uh, and here's what he had on his Facebook page yesterday. He said this, On Passover the Lord drew near to me and said, I have been waiting for such a, t a long time for my people to slow down long enough so they could hear what I have to say and speak in this hour. I have many things I want to share with you concerning the new ways for the new era. I have many things to say to you concerning the new ways for the new era. I believe that. And would you, would you take a little bit of time 
tonight with us at Just Worship tonight on Pentecost Sunday 2020. It's going to be really, really significant. Bless you so much. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, take a little bit more look at, at Acts 2, the book of Acts. So significant. And uh, keep welcoming Holy Spirit. He wants to keep filling you and filling you and filling you so you have His presence for those around you. God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Brian. Don't forget, Just Worship is tonight. Email Aaron for the link, and uh, we are going to worship together and pray together uh, as a church, and we'll get to see each other's faces on Zoom. So uh, it's going to be a wonderful night. Don't forget that. Get the link from Aaron, and we will see you tonight for Just Worship. Thanks for coming to Freedom House this morning. Bye-bye.